a new documentary is out. And if you're a do- if you're a Doctor Who fan of any era whatsoever, if you're a Doctor Who fan, uh, Doctor Who Am I is the story of the long forgotten Doctor Who television movie that aired on Fox in the 90s. And this movie crossed the line and angered some fans. Doctor Who kissed a lady in this movie. Now, is that breaking lore? Who knows? But if whether you're a Doctor Who fan or not, if you, I, I, I love fandom, and I've been going to Gallifrey One for years. I usually hang out in the lobby and drink. I'm not going to lie. But also, if I'm able to get a badge, I'll walk amongst the Whovians and the Gallifreyans and uh, enjoy the con. Amazing paddles. The passion for Doctor Who at this con which is at the Los Angeles Marriott, Airport Marriott, um, is just palpable. And um, the love of that audience is amazing. Even for those that may have been upset by this television film, what this movie is also, it's a it's delving into that movie, but also the screenwriter of the film. And the screenwriter revisits and, and sort of, visits Gallifrey one and, and kind of comes out, so to speak, to discuss the movie after years of it really not uh, being something that, that people knew about. In addition, if you don't know about Dr. Who and the origin of Dr. Who, it's a great documentary that walks you through the history of the character and why the character is so beloved. Cause um, for years, I mean, Dr. Who fans are sort of like Dr. Who fans. I, I, my recollection of Doctor Who fans, Doctor Who fans are in the nerd community, the kind of fans that other fans make fun of. They've always got the long scarves and the jacket, depending on which, you know, doctor they're, they're a fan of. What's your doctor? And um, I love it. The documentary has been in the works for years, which always tells me the filmmakers wanted to get it right Please welcome the co-directors of Doctor Who Am I, Matthew Jacobs and Vanessa Yule are here. Uh, thank you. Hello. Vanessa, hello. Hi there. there. Can you it's hear me? Perfectly. And perfectly. I'm sounding all right. <laughs> you sound perfect. You both sound Great. perfect. I met you uh, a while back. Uh, um, like 2019. 2019, the before times. We showed, we debuted the Whoa! Whoa. Hey, whoa. <laughs> it's never happened. Okay, sorry. Okay. You're on your phone here, but um, you you we screened the trailer for Doctor Who. Am I at um, Comic Con? I believe. Was yeah, Comic Con 2019. That, that was the uh, yeah, yeah in San Diego it was our first time oh. we were there. So thank you for that. So great to see you again. And um, that was our our sales trailer, and it was quite an interesting experience for us to sort of watch it there with with an audience and we were just sort of blown away by the entire experience um and yeah matthew you're back it was very very helpful i remember <laughs> it was a few years ago we we realized um i mean you've probably seen the new trailer um the trailer that kaleidoscope have it's very different it's slightly different um uh, and we really focused the journey since um since then um so uh it's yeah it was uh it was a great experience to go to comic-con though actually because you if you've been to as you're saying you have to to galley um galley is a sort of fan-run convention there's like three thousand four thousand people there tops and um and uh and it feels like it's generated by the fans whereas when you go to comic-con you feel like it's an expo. You feel like this is all the all the all the companies are doing it. It's a very different feeling. What uh, like uh, first of all, the film is fantastic. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. I so love this movie because, um, you know, I, I I I've I've watched Doctor Who when I was a kid. I always loved it when like they were outdoors they were shooting in 16 millimeter when they were indoors it was shot on video and i always thought that was funny it reminded me of monty python and mm -hmm. so i would watch monty python i watched that um like it, it just 
it was such an experience. And then just seeing the new Doctor Who fandom is very different, you know, with the Christopher Eccleston kind of reboot. Um, I, I really love that there are a whole new, I mean, there are generations of Doctor Who fans. And this was an amazing film because it's your journey, Matthew. It's your like journey back into this world to kind of, um, I mean, it, it opens, the movie opens with like the sort of like little primer, like history of Doctor Who, the character, why he's so beloved, kind of setting up the story, but also you going through a storage uh, container. That's right. I'm opening the, I'm opening the, I'm opening a storage unit to the 90s, um, <laughs> which is when, when we did that. And, uh, and then, and then it was really both of us, you know, it was kind of Vanessa's idea to do it because I'd been invited to all these conventions after the, after the couple of years or a year or two after the uh, 50th people started inviting me to conventions and uh, um, I didn't want to go. And, and uh, it was Vanessa was saying, e -e -e -e, cause I, I didn't regard myself as a fan. And I think that's kind of the journey um of the film as i go from not thinking that i'm a fan to sort of realizing i've kind of been a fan all along in a strange way um and you know and it's not just about doctor who fandom it's about fandom and it's about you know storytelling as well i think i i hope that's why the documentary will have a uh, will have a relatively good life um, and I think it'll have a good life this coming year because it's the 60th anniversary of the show. This show's been around for 60 years, longer than any other sci-fi show. And so there's going to be a lot of attention on it. And Gravitas have picked it up for American distribution. And so we'll be, um, you know, in, hopefully in theaters. In some places, they're saying it will be in theaters. In some places, we just don't know. So we've yet to talk to Gravitas what, about, about what the exact plans are. But I'm hoping that there's quite an audience for this documentary. I'm, well, one thing though is that Matthew and I—I I worked on a couple of Matthew's other features, and so we were friends before. And yeah. it really was a film that came out of our friendship and this desire to like, oh yeah, we're just going to shoot a documentary. And then over seven years later, it's finally done. So it is sort of—it was a journey we weren't expecting to go on. And I think Chris, back in 2000. Um, 19 when we showed the uh the trailer and i think you even were like it's it, it will be a journey i mean we still hadn't raised duck gotten the money to do the finishing yeah. thing and we did that in covid we and I, completion. you're thanked in the credits chris um, oh thank you that's awesome uh, as you know being a you, uh, adapter and really like you know encouraging us sort of in the indie filmmaking front um but it's like Matthew is just a funny guy. I love him, yeah. He's my friend, and it's just like throwing him in with a bunch of like really nice Whovians. It just seemed like because Matthew's kind of like Ricky Gervaisi, <laughs> oh, uh, Larry yeah. David, so throwing him in with these wonderful uh, Whovians. It was certainly going to get some laughs. <laughs> yeah, it's um, and also you're an accomplished screenwriter as well. I mean, you've done so much. Yeah, as you're going through that the the locker, you find like old versions of screenplays. Um, yeah. I thought that was amazing. Yeah, a few films. I've done a few films, and it. But it's you know it's strange because this is a very different kind of film. This is a like like Vanessa was saying. This is a most films are sort of born of a kind of ambition. You know, I want to tell this story. I want to, you know, I want to prove just how great a filmmaker I am. And, and, uh, or, or, or I want to explore this or thing. This film was really born of friendship. Um, and as such, um, it's quite a personal piece for both of us. Um, uh, um, you know, we both came to it bringing, bring, and that's why at the end, the film is dedicated um, to our fathers um, and and to various other people, but it's definitely dedicated to our fathers. They get like the second credit because I explore my relationship with my father and 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 Vanessa. I I think you know the father is there very much as well. So and that's what happens in Doctor Who. He gets regenerated, um, and uh, um, so it has some sort of deeper aspects to it that we we came across because it was born of friendship and not born of a kind of a, a sort of narrow idea. 
What I love also is you give like this whole, like the beginning, like explaining Doctor yeah. Who and how long the, like the TARDIS stands for, I love this, TARDIS is. <laughs> there you right. go, little TARDIS. TARDIS. There you go. I'm Bigger on the inside. the light on too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love that you like, because so what I'm saying is if you've never heard of Doctor Who, what the movie does a really good job of is explaining why Doctor Who is, is popular and the concept behind the character and who the character is, then launches into your personal story and how you happen to write the screenplay that um, for the script for the movie that aired on Fox, like it aired like once, right? And that was it. Like, and it's sort of almost like a lost movie, even though you can find it. Um, and and just sort of the mixed reaction that fans had to it, and you you don't shy away from anything. There are fans that hated the film, and you get to talk to them. Yeah. <laughs> mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, even when that's the thing about fandom, uh, you know, a good fan will will um, will they'll, they'll criticize you, but they're still fans. They'll they still they're still. They still kind of like you, and it's still. And I had I didn't realize going in. I thought they might just kill me, um, which I thought would have been hilarious. Which <laughs> also would have been hilarious, but <laughs> but it, but it, but if but really, you know, they 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 say things like you know, well, with all due respect, you know, you know, some people hate RTD, some people hate Moffat. With all due respect, you know, people hate you. Um, you know, <laughs> they're saying that to me, and it's it's like, and it's like, well, where do you go from that? And then, and then you find that there is a there is a place to go from that. There is a sort of mutual respect. They can tell you what they're thinking, and and uh, um, and it's bigger than the show. You know, when you have a community of fans, well, you know this. Film threats very much about this. Do you know what I mean? It's very much about the nature of of um, of um, you know genre films and the way in which um the you know is the way the audience is a community well, that's what i felt anyway when we were in san diego well um the chat has a lot of questions for you we've got over 300 people watching live let's oh, launch Hello. yeah let's launch into some questions right here or comments patrick lemire uh, says it's interesting to see the evolution of production values of the series, especially early. It was fairly threadbare and it became cinematic. Interesting comment. Um, yeah. Mora Maga says, what does the sonic screwdriver smell like? That's a good question. <laughs> Maybe I, I like. Mean, I always think what the things smell like, don't I, Vanessa? I, I'm a <laughs> You're, smeller. yeah, smelling things. It's like, why are you smelling? <laughs> Maybe like, uh, maybe like, um, uh, sort of like not popcorn, but um, uh, cotton candy. Maybe when it smells like cotton candy when he fires it. There you go. Uh, <laughs> Davina Duckworth says, "Didn't the BBC lose a lot of old Doctor Who footage? I think they lost some. Yeah, old they episodes. lost whole shows. Yeah. They, they, the BBC were on a economy drive um, at various times." And so they they'd look over. They say, "Oh, what are those? Those are the old tapes of that old show." And they just wipe them so they could use the tape again. And then they have to then they had to dig out telecines that had been sent to India and Australia. So there's a lot of early. You got to realize that when when the show started, it was a small half hour um, afternoon show on a Saturday afternoon for kids. Very very small budget so small that they couldn't even buy the rights from the writers. Basically, the writers would license per show for things. So as a result, you had writers like Terence Dix, who ended up owning the dialects. Um, uh, and so the chain of title on the early TV show is incredibly complex um, because it was a very low budget show. And and, that, and the dialects themselves, they look like cameras, basically. And, you know, they can't go up and down. So it's, it's, it's and fun. And a whisk and a plunger. A you whisk know. and a plunger. It's, it, it's, it's, it was a fun show, really dreamed yeah. up in many ways by the Canadian producer. There's a wonderful, um, there's a wonderful uh, feature film. Um, what's it called? The Time and Time and oh, Space. Anyway. Yeah. yeah it's, time it's, and Space. It's, time and Space about the original show. So it's gone through all these forms. And the great thing that's always happened is the film, the show doesn't have a Bible. Um, so which, whoever writes it 
can come on board and can reinvent and and come up with new ideas. But as the fandom built, obviously the va- the fans themselves created you know a dogma, um, and it's that that that's kind of a little bit what the documentary is about about how do you deal with the kind of dogma that um, a fandom creates around a project. Lubitsch touched me, says there are still about a hundred missing episodes, but there are audio recordings for all. So that's, that's right. And they've started um, animating those recordings. Oh my God. They've started wow. doing that. Yes. Uh, Brock Samson says, what's your impression of the Jodie Whittaker era? Well, what, what do you think, Vanessa? I mean, it's, it's great. I, every doctor is great. You know, I, he, Chibnall, of course, is getting a lot of heat for what he's done with the show, but then now it's still regenerating into a new show. And then we get David Tennant back and we're going to get Shuti Gatwa. So it's just like, mm-hmm. and there are people who, we've met people who say Jody is their favorite doctor and that is great. Um, so I, I think, think that that's the point of the show is that it changes with the time and, you know, who knows, maybe it'll be like the eighth doctor and, you know, years from now, people will be like, oh, yes, the Jodie Whittaker years. They didn't like her. Um, That's you know, right. It's just and there'll be, a documentary, there'll be a documentary, there'll be a documentary right, about around. her. What was, <laughs> what was fan backlash like when when the movie came out then compared to today? Do, do you think uh, you might have uh, lost long. your career after after that <laughs> it was done today? He never it's talked good... about it. Of all of the credits that, like, I didn't know Matthew wrote The Eighth Doctor. I could have looked on IMDb, I suppose. But of all the credits that he's talked, he talked about over the years, he never mentioned Doctor Who. So that's when we were like, I was taken by surprise as he's saying I'm being invited to these conventions. And I'm like, why? So I was surprised. Matthew, you know, you, you talk about, you know, a lot of things that you've done and you never mentioned Doctor Who. Right. Uh, some more. I don't like it. Uh, you, the, your question, which is good, which is how did the, the fans' reaction manifest itself and how is it different now? That right now, people are kind of a much more generous hearted toward the TV movie. They see it for what it was, a kind of a bridge between the classic and the, and the new Who. Um, uh, um, at the time, um uh, as is pointed out by the executive producer in the in the um in, in, the, in the film um it, it, whatever i'd written they were gonna criticize it they were gonna hate it um because when people reinvent something quite often one of the first targets is the writer and and jody whitaker for example is has been an unfair target for people i mean really what they've been doing with Jody is they were sort of changing the tone of the doctor um, with Peter Capaldi. He got really serious and dark and it was great stuff. But, but then they said, no, this is a family show, you know, you know, let's, let's have this sort of really optimistic, you know, upbeat character. And she's a little like a children's TV show host at times for some people because of that. But I liked it because there was, you know, she has a, um, there's a tremendous warmth to her. Um, and I feel like they kind of scratched the surface with her. I hope her character stays alive um, on Big Finish and, and in other places because because that's where the eighth Doctor carried on living. You know, these Doctors don't go away. Um, it's such a dedicated fandom. Well, I've, I've always said I actually don't care who plays the Doctor. There's only one requirement, a British accent. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have a British accent. You know, can you imagine Doctor Who without a British accent? It doesn't no. work. Bruce Campbell as Doctor Who. Oh. Bruce Campbell would not be a good Doctor Who. I'm sorry. <laughs> Another question here. Did you get any support from the BBC? For the documentary? Yeah. No. We showed it to them at an early stage. We showed it to their documentary division. And they said, well, you really need to take it to the other. You know, it's like a large corporation. So yeah. you you need to take this to BBC Studios. Um, and we didn't want to do that because we didn't want the documentary to really be about the show. Um, and so that was the only time um, we took it to the BBC. They, so far, they haven't, um, you know, stood in the way of it. They've been actually quite supportive, you know, that by, by, by not objecting to it. I think we're covering something they can't cover. So, and, and I think it's nice to have stuff that's out there about the show um um they, they spend a long time making those shows so they so it helps keep the audience alive i think 
Um, a few more comments and questions here. Um, let's get uh, Davina Duckworth asks or comments. I didn't believe Peter Davison was the real doctor for a long time. <laughs> and then uh, uh, Sifax says, does it show the decline after Matt Smith? Um, the movie's not really, it's not about that. It's Matthew, no. it's for no. your journey, but it is for, I think this is for, if you are a Doctor Who fan, this is, this is from where I sit, it's a must watch documentary because yeah. your story is, is about, you know, the divides even that can happen in fandom when people love this or like this. And then you're going in the belly of the beast, Gallifrey one, um, uh, just and Long Island who as well. Yeah. Just to like, you know, well, here I am. I did that one that a lot of people have problems with. And, and I, I love that. So it doesn't really deal with Matt Smith stuff. Uh, no. Solomon Thornton asked, so what was the process of doing this doc? What was the process? Yeah. Well, the process was, well was it was went out and just decided to go shoot this. Uh, Matthew was very reluctant. He didn't really want to go, but kind of was like, okay, let's do this. And it was very much about the fans at first. I mean, I wanted it to be about Matthew because he's my friend. It's my first, I've done some other short documentaries. It's my first feature. And um, we just are kind of finding our feet with what is co-directing. So then Matthew would interview people and ask questions about like, who is the doctor in you? And then I would interview and um, after our first film shoot with Gallifrey One, it was kind of like, Matthew's like, oh, we have, we have our feature film. And then I'm like, no, we have to keep <laughs> filming. <laughs> so then we uh, met fans and went into their homes. And then we were invited to Long Island Who when we kept filming, filming there. And then it was really getting into the edit at that point. Um, which I, it was my first feature editing because Ma Matthew put a lot of, you know, you know, trust in me to do that. And then from there is like, the, there are other things we needed to get. We needed our, you know, our drone shots. We have like three drone shots. So now we're like, you know, a slick documentary. Um, and uh, we had to get Eric Roberts. Um, but really it was some, the process developed over the years because we weren't entirely sure what we were getting at first. I mean, Matthew, you, you take it away as well. Yeah. I think we we were, you know, we spent a good couple of years um, on and off going around filming stuff, and then um, we would we cut it together. There was a basic shape there, um, but we realised it was um, more pivotally uh, my story as you um, as we explore this this journey of going from not knowing that you're really a fan to knowing that you that you are a fan and and recognising. That moment, I don't know if you remember it, um, where I've I've been filming um, uh, Paul's birthday on the phone, um, and I'm up in the being interviewed there, and I'm very disturbed about having to do a, a panel about the gunfighters because my father was in um, Doctor Who in 1966, and so my relationship with Doctor the Doctor goes way back. And I think it was around that time when we got to Long Island Who in the fall of 2015, we started to realize really what the focus of the story was. Well, we knew that realize. was important. And then it was a couple of years of editing really um, on and off um, and bringing various people in to look at it like like um, Colin Vaines and Lee Stobie, who was my manager. Um, and, you know, people would have really good comments. And so it evolved. Um, by the time we were talking to uh, Eric Roberts, we we kind of knew what the film was um, in, in, that, in those years. And then it was very, then it's that struggle that all documentaries have of raising completion finance, finding a distributor. Luckily we found Kaleidoscope when we won the audience award at Sci-Fi London, um, that made all the difference and the Guardian covered us. You know, there was all sorts of coverage. And so as a result, we got a, a very good distributor in the form of Collide Hope. Um, and that's really, you know, why we're here talking to you. Well, I love that you included all of your trepidation regarding going back to this uh, fandom, uh, your apprehension, uh, how will I be received? I, I, all of that is the the personal touches and things you included, I think are very important. It's also with the documentary, I've made uh, a documentary. I have a documentary myself that's coming out in April. Yeah. And um, 
you gotta know like when are you done are you yes. done how do you like is it done yet you don't know but uh, i'm so glad you're able to you know uh, uh document all of this one last question here from lubich touch me asks for matthew have you followed the development of your doctor through the big finish audio adventures i peripherally Look, is, is the best way to say it. Um, I, you know, occasionally listen to little bits of it, follow what people are saying about it. Um, but obviously, for during the main years when he was, when it was just Big Finish, Big Finish was like the only place, and they were really featuring the Doctor. Um, those years, I was off on other films like, you know, Empress New Groove and and TV shows and God knows what. So I was doing other stuff. And then I, so 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 no, not really. Um, but I think I love the persona that Big Finish has given. Um, um, uh, you know, because I think every doctor sort of develops a bit. They get re, they 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 come into being um, as a certain kind of a doctor, and then it takes a few shows at least for them to sort of settle down to their personality. And I think. That's what happened with Paul with Big Finish. He's really cemented his personality as the eighth doctor on Big Finish. Um, and just a final comment here. Davina Duckworth says, I'm really looking forward to this movie. Uh, just as someone who has seen it, it's awesome. If you're a fan, and even if you're not a fan, if you're not a fan, you will learn why this fandom uh, so beloves this character, a character that you said earlier. Um, I didn't realize, holy cow, it's been 60 years, 60 yeah. years of this yeah. character. Um, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, how, how many, uh, how, how many characters can you say that about that has existed in media, you know? Um, yeah. I guess Star Trek's been along around a long time, but not as much as Doctor Who. Mickey um, Mouse. <laughs> Mickey Mouse. There you go. Uh, Matthew and Vanessa, thank you so much. Where can people find the movie? At the moment, um, it's at the moment you have to go to Amazon UK, um, and you can you can get a um, Region Two DVD and Blu-ray, um, uh, but so it hasn't yet been released in america that'll happen next year um but if you're in the uk you know um it's had its cinema release and it's out digitally and certainly from here you can through amazon uk you can get um european versions of it if you want to see it otherwise we're doing various festivals and um and conventions over the next few months um, we'll be at galley we'll be at I'll, galley I'll be for at sure galley. Oh, good. Oh, no, we get there. to see you. Yes. Are, we'll are you going to do a on... panel? You can do a panel and a screening. Yeah. We're Friday gonna... night, there'll be a screening, and Saturday, we have a panel. Oh, I'll be there. I'll be there. Cool. Oh, please. Yeah. Come cool. along. Awesome. Maybe you can uh, interview us. Thank you so much, Vanessa, Matthew. We'll remind people too um, about nice. the film screening there and um, looking forward to the US release. Have a great rest of your day. Appreciate it. Thank you thank so you. much. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you.